I'm Mark Christopher, and with me is my wife Gail, who is the other half of Woodmark and Gail. And this week we've got a project from Gail. This is all her doing. This is our maple leaf penny table. And uh, what? Why did you want to do our nice dining room table in pennies? We've had this table quite a while, and I really love the table. But I thought, what the heck? I'll try it on that. <laughs> now, this jug was filled with pennies, and it wasn't enough. So we put out a call on uh, Facebook to our uh, local East Hans Wants to Know site and uh, started asking for people pennies because pennies are no longer in circulation in Canada. So we've been uh, traipsing around all week on Penny Patrol, and uh, thank you to everyone who, uh, who got us pennies. And uh, so there are... I started to count these individually, and uh, this table is 5 feet long by uh, 33 inches wide. And after about the fifth row, I lost count. So, Matt. I, is, I actually Matt, talked to him, said something to him, and he lost count. It was funny, I did it a couple of times. So, I've done an estimation, and there are 3,535 pennies on this table. So, that also. And that takes uh, into account this centerpiece. Gail cut out these Celtic crosses. Where did you find these? Well, I found them online, and then I uh, made a template, printed out a template. And uh, you can see in the pictures uh, that we've posted the process that I went through to, uh, to create the Celtic uh, knots. And these are made out of um, metal sheets that we got from uh, Michael's uh, Craft Supply. Uh, very thin and uh, she cut them all out and they're all inset into the table using these little brass nails which actually has a really cool look on it. It's raised there right now. The reason I nailed them down is I knew that they wouldn't glue down very well on top of this uh, this base paint that we used, uh, that now, I used. Now that's the first thing that you did was you cleaned the table off and then you and you put down this metallic yeah. green paint. Yeah, well you so have, uh, things don't glue up on it on, onto the metallic very well. Which turned out to be in my favor because sometimes in a process this big you're um, you know you're repositioning some of the pennies and and taking things into account. So you, you don't want something that's going to glue down so much that you can't reposition it. Now I find uh, this was actually really good. I've, I've seen online that some people, you know, pour on glue or and, and that works good. But this just holds them well enough uh, so that you you can keep them steady during the pour, and um, and but it doesn't stick to this metallic stuff so that you can't re reposition. So that. Kind of that's just a favor. that's just a glue stick, right? Yeah, it's just a glue stick, just yeah. a regular so, pages glue stick. So, the um, when you started, you just started in one one small section, and I know that you've got well, it's been six days in the process to get to this point, and as you can see, there are repeating patterns. All the corners are all brights, and you can see it around in here, and it's it's actually a really cool pattern. Um, and so you, after you painted it and let it dry, you just just glue, put down the glue on a little area and then just start positioning the pennies? Yeah, uh, I started on the outer edges first. And uh, I, I, what I would do is I just, you know, use the glue stick and run it along and stick so many pennies. Now, a, a lot of the um, uh, ones I've seen online, they don't put a pattern in there. And... Uh, obsessively so I think I have a little bit of OCD which kind of works out too because it, it looks pretty I, I, I also f suffer from a form of OCD it's uh, CDO it's just like OCD but the letters are in the right order so it's a thing it's a thing really I don't think so he, he does because he, he insisted that he had to count all the pennies now it's funny because I had to have them all turned up right but I had actually no interest in uh, counting them all. I yes, said, every every one of these is turned maple leaf side up. 
And there's one American penny in here, you told me. Yeah, just one. Just I haven't found key. I haven't found it yet. There's actually not, but you know, I just say it so people search for it. No, that's true, there is. But okay, let's get back. Okay. Okay. So after you so you've got there's six days in the process and we were trying to calculate how much time this actually took between laying uh, just sorting the pennies, which you found very therapeutic. Yep. Uh, yeah, and I did, you know what, I did find it uh, therapeutic, uh, in a way. Uh, you wouldn't believe how many uh, different tones there are amongst pennies. Like, you know, you think they're shiny than dull, but there's actually not. Uh, they, they differ in, um, in, in degrees of shade. Yeah, it, uh, it took a while to lay out the patterns, but, you know, I just went with in my head and what I liked in that and uh, I wanted to reflect our Irish background is why I went with the um, the Celtic and I just wanted something to accent the center but it was all kind of uh, on the spur of the moment so you know a lot of people don't do patterns and they don't do pennies up and that and it, and it still looks beautiful it's just your particular taste and what you want. So if, if you weren't to do any patterns, it'd take a lot less time. Yeah, you know, if, you were, yeah, uh, yeah. if you were being very, very Cut specific. Cut it in half. So, or, or, yeah. so after you, you, you painted it, you glued it, you got your petties in the right order and came up with all of it, we figured it was somewhere in the order of 50 to 60 hours that you have got into this. Yeah. Uh, after you got that done, or you got that done, because I had nothing to do with this, um, we took the uh, we took one of the uh, Venetian blinds down in our room, and uh, we took the uh, we took some of the slats off, and the slats are actually taped around the edge, the the full edge. It's uh, no, actually, actually, first off on the e you know, no, let me tell you, first off on the edge, I taped off the edge before you put the pennies down with painter's tape, just painter's tape. And then I actually nailed down those slats. Oh, okay. Yeah, because... See, I had nothing to do with it, so I don't know what I'm talking and about. And then I went over it again with some more... Over the slats uh, with some more painter's tape. Because when you do the pour, and, and because of the experience before, uh, the, this product is really good. But, of course, it has... It, well, you know, it'll run over the edges. So uh, I want it to be as thorough with uh, the, the, the rib I made on the table to contain the ore uh, when we finally do it. And uh, I, I think it's, it's really good. I've seen a lot of different techniques online and this is the first time I'm gonna try this out. So hopefully it, it goes well. Now we, we've put down a, uh, cause this is our dining room table. And uh, we're, you know, we didn't move anywhere to do this job. so. From, again, from past experience, we put down a drop cloth because this product is an awesome product. Uh, and But, of course, like any of these products, you know, they're hard to get off if, if you mistake me drip on the floor. And this is Envirotex Light Pour On High Gloss Finish. Um, one thick coat equals up to 50 coats of varnish is what they're saying. And Gail is going to mix this. We got this at Michael's. And Gail is going to uh, mix this up. And she's going to do a pour over this. So we'll basically end up with like an acrylic uh, top on this. So you won't be able to feel the pennies, but you will be able to see them. Yeah, it'll, it'll cover the pennies. Okay. So, $34 a box. And we think we will use two of them. stage so I'm going to mix up the uh, resin and the hardener uh, so we can pour it so we'll take it and flow it together in one container and 
now I'm going to mix it well together, making sure to scrape the sides and the bottom quite often for two full minutes. So, here I am, mixing, mixing, mixing is kind of like batter. This is kind of boring. You know what? Can we fast forward for this? Two minutes, you pour it into a fresh container. Make sure you scrape the sides of all its goodness. And we're going to have to give that a stir for one minute. Yep. So, all right, we're ready now for the pour. And uh, be turns out I had to use both boxes. I grossly underestimated the size of this table. So I'm going to have uh, Mark pour it while I spread it. Now you're going to, for this case, we're going to pour it in a zigzag, a zigzag pattern and don't go too heavy here, all right? So, uh, and So what Gail is doing now is just taking a, uh, a pin and just uh, popping the uh, air bubbles that are that we can see. We're not going to get all, all of them because every time you uh, change your angle you see a whole bunch more, but we're sure we're going to get most of them here. Yeah, and there's a, a met product, like you can use a torch to, uh, to take some of them out, but I don't seem to be having too much of a problem with it, so... I'm just going to pop them while while this stuff is still in a liquid state because it, it self levels and fills itself in. So, but once it hardens too much, of course, that's not going to happen. So, you know, if you don't, if you mixed it well to begin with, I don't think it, the bubbles will be too much of a problem. So the, uh, the mixing is uh, quite important, proper procedure. And we don't have very much. Of the epoxy left. No, you were right, Mark. Uh, we we definitely needed the, the two bottles. But in my defense, I did listen to you, which is not the norm for me. There's a big bubble. Here you can see the, uh, the sheen that's on it there right now. If you've got any questions about this, feel free to uh, visit our Facebook page, Woodmark and Gail, G-A-I-L. And if you like this video, please uh, like, rate, comment, and subscribe. So we'll see you soon with the big reveal when it's all uh, when it's all done. Say goodbye, Gail. Bye, y'all. Well, here we are, four days later. Uh, the table is. Pretty much all cured. I can't find any uh, any soft spots in it anywhere. Um, it's been uh, it turned out wonderfully. A couple of, couple of uh, little air bubbles, but you're not going to get all of them out on a project of this size. I think you did an absolutely wonderful job with this, boo. Thanks, baby. So until we see you next time, uh, do something nice for somebody. You'll feel better for it. Bye bye for now, and God bless. Great job, boo. Thanks.